In the following example, we will uh, focus on measuring centrality in networks. Well, we consider a very stylized uh, problem of a small network of uh, web pages, and on each web page, we take a very small model with four web pages, and on each web page, there are hyperlinks to other pages. So, for instance, we here. We denote by the dots, they are the web pages. And here we have a hyperlink from one page to another. And we each each of the pages has certain hyperlinks. So we get a small directed network where you can switch between web pages following the hyperlinks. So if we number the pages, so we have pages 1, 2, 3 and 4, well let's assume that from page 1 half of the visitors uh, uses hyperlink to page 2 and half of the people use hyperlink to page 3, etc. So, um, also from page 3, here we see that all people are directed to page 4, etc. So we have a sm very small scale network. Well, suppose that initially we know the fractions of visitors for each page. So xi is a percentage of web servers on page i. So then we may summarize the visitors on moment 0, t0, by a distribution vector. What is a distribution vector? Well, it's the vector x keeping track of the percentages of people on the different web pages. So it's x1, x2, x3, x4. So this is what initially uh, uh, happens. So now what happens at moment 1? We've already uh, told you that um, well you saw in yellow the fractions of people going elsewhere. So actually following the arrows the servers spread over the available uh, over the available links in the proportions that are given in yellow. Yeah and if you look more carefully this is an equal spread. So if there are two links available then the percentages of web servers spreading over these two links will be 50%. So we get a transition from x, a distribution vector x, to a distribution vector y. Yeah, in the new phase, how many people will end up in, uh, in page 1? Well, we look at the arrows coming into 1, so it's half of the original visitors of 2, so it's a half times x2. And uh, we can do this for the other links as well. So we get a half times x2, a half times x1 plus x4, etc. Uh, which means this is actually a matrix vector product where the matrix is given by 0, half, 0, 0, half, 0, 0, 1, a half, half, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 1, 0, corresponding to the last row times x. So actually y is a transformation of x. So the distribution of the surface at moment t is 1 is actually a vector x1 and it's uh, basically calculated by multiplication of a matrix A times x. So what happens? So we start off with a distribution vector x, we get a vector y, x1, z is x2, x3, etc. So 
So you might imagine, you can imagine that, uh, well, something in the end will have a limit of something. Well, what happens in the long run? Do we have convergence? So actually we have a dynamical process where the distribution vector at moment n plus 1 is exactly equal to the matrix A times x n, the distribution vector at moment n. Now, so here we write down the matrix A times the vector x n. So the question is, if we want to show some kind of convergence, then the, uh, the, the, the question will be, is whether this transition can be an equilibrium. Do we end up in an equilibrium? Yes, if so, what is the equilibrium? Well, the situation is in equilibrium. What does it mean? Well, the, the system is in equilibrium if there is an x, a vector x, a distribution vector x such that if we apply a, a to x, or multiplicate a times x, do we get x back? Well, actually we're going to solve for this vector x. So a x equals x means that a x minus x equals zero. But we can write x differently as the identity times x is zero. And now we use the properties of matrix vector products. Then we can take out the matrix A minus identity times X equals zero. So actually what we're going to do is solving the system with augmented matrix. On the left hand side we write A minus identity matrix, the 4 by 4 identity matrix. And on the right hand side we get the zero vector over here. Here we see, here we have the matrix A. The only things that are changed from A are the diagonal elements. They are all minus 1 due to subtracting the identity matrix, A, I4. So and here we get the vector of zeros, which is just this vector here. Well, we're, gonna p we're not going to perform all detailed Gauss-Jordan eliminations, but you want you may show that you end up with the next matrix as the reduced row echelon form. Now we're gonna just going to write it down. By now you should be able to perform the necessary calculations by yourself. So we, you may check whether or not this is the accurate matrix. And we see that actually we have three pivots and four variables and one row of only zeros. So we have a free variable. In this case, it is x4 as a free variable. So we see that x as a solution equals x1, x2, x3, x4, and x1 equals 2 third times x4. And if we write x4, t4, x4, then we get the obtain the following vector. So if we write x4 is t, then we see x3 is t as well. x2 is 4 over 3t, and x1 is 2 over 3t, or 2 third t. So it's t times a particular vector. 2 third, 4 third, 1, 1. Well, we know that x is a distribution vector, so the sum of the coordinates should be 1. Or x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 should be a equal to 1, from which we get 
that t is one fourth, so that we end up with a distribution vector one six, one third, one fourth, and one fourth. So in equilibrium, we see that the highest fraction is at page two, one third. So page two attracts the most views. So you might see it, it's the most central page in this network. Well, this analysis forms the basis for Google's page ranking. What Google's page ranking does is, well, if you use Google's search uh, engine for some pages, then you get a kind of ranking. The, the things you that are shown on, the, on top, they are there for a good reason. Either people pay well, or uh, it is that they show up on top of the list of fractions that are determined by a system that is invented by Sajabin, a Lawrence page in 98.